Uh, back to our top story to discuss the new police reform introduced by the Interior Ministry. I'm now joined by Alexei Pankin, political columnist at the Moscow Times. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Now, uh, talking about this new training program, can you tell us a bit more about its aim? Well, I suppose the aim is to bring the Russian police to the level of, of normal qualification of police officer. That is, they have to be very skilled in a lot of things, and they also have to be patriotic, and they have to be patriotically motivated as real civil servants. Is that really a realistic thing to do? Well, it, it's something that has to be done. I suppose that the kind of training they will hopefully be receiving now is every police officer in the world should be receiving. So I suppose things will not change overnight, but gradually let's hope, and keep fingers crossed, let's hope that this will improve. Well, as far as I see, the main problem uh, is probably corruption and as well, uh, as well as police brutality. Now, how can you provide a training for that? How, what are the means of achieving that? Well, I mean, pro providing tra training is not that difficult. It's just you provide some technical skills. Because so you're just telling lo lots, you of, lots of these things are just a actually regular professional training. So this should not be too much of a problem. Patriotic things like, you know, the knowledge of national anthem, etc. These well, things are also in, in, envisaged, but I suppose it's, it's well, just natural. How can you actually natural. just by training stop police from taking bribes, from beating innocent people? How can you stop them uh, just by training? Well, you, you know, if, first of all, let's... Uh, it's like this, this corruption part is the probably most widely publicized part. If you speak with any regular Russian who had to deal with the police, he will tell you dozens of stories how the police really rescued people. For instance, I can tell you stories about how twice my wife was helped really when she was mugged in the streets and when she was cheated, etc. They were very good and very efficient. On the other hand, everybody will tell you lots of stories about corruption, brutality, etc. So it's not just, just black. Uh, picture. So I suppose that the idea is to make it probably more grey and to, to more stimulate them in uh, professionally doing their duties. Other than training, are there any other measures that are being planned? For instance, some introducing some fines or some additional measures to stop police from being brutal? Well, I suppose, yes, that's, it's, it's, it's in generally, this is the part of anti-corruption drive that is happening now. And, you know, fighting corruption is uh, basically is next to impossible. It's, it's, it's very slow. But the, I think the, the thing is that these things are publicly discussed and, and are pushed forward is also important. It's also important that the police is under constant pressure. There's lots of coverage of brutality in the media, etc., etc. These things are also quite important, I suppose. So if we are to have a good police, a professional police, this will take time. And this is a constant effort on very many dimensions. Uh, just very quickly, can you recall any recent cases when um, a, a policeman was uh, convicted and is now in jail for his, his or her actions? Well, Major Yevsukov, who started shooting at, at people at the supermarket, he is now in jail, and I think uh, and he was recently, he was... Uh, found, what I'd say, found sane and fully responsible for his actions. In other words, he failed to, to escape the case by, uh, uh, say, making the case that, that he is uh, not, not completely sane. So, th th and this is a very visible case. I think that this, this particular accident uh, was the last straw, yeah. I, I would say. All right. Well, thank you very much for your comments. That was Alexei Pankin, political columnist at Moscow.